Thanks for joining. Uh, now we're going to do the KDV board report. Um, this is something that we used to do within the AGM, but then we realized that it was a good idea that everybody who also is not part of the KDV could join and see it. So that's why we're doing it here on the, on the well, main program of Academy. Uh, for those of you who are EV members and are scared of it, there will also be a version of this uh, in the AGM for like, I don't know, making sure that you get all of the information. Um, before we get started, let's do a super short introduction of ourselves. We can do it with the first slide if you want, so you can see our names. I'm going to start myself. My name is Alesh. I am the... Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. My name is Alesh. I'll do this one. Sure. I am from Barcelona, and I am the KDV president nowadays. Hello. <laughs> Hi, I'm Adrian. I'm a roving board member, I guess. And uh, uh, that's all. Lydia. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nate Graham. I am another roving board member. I'm from the USA. I was uh, just elected last year, and I'm happy to see all of you. And hi, I'm Lydia. I'm on the board for quite some time, currently vice president. Um, and we also would have Ike here, but for personal reasons, he unfortunately can't be here. So we will do this with the four of us. Yeah. Um, well, hi, Ike, if you're watching us. <laughs> <laughs> well, he knows everything we're going to say anyway. So um, in this AGM, uh, we, like, there's three um, of our roles that, uh, and this year it's going to be Lydia's, uh, Ike's as well, and mine. Um, the three of us have announced that we're running again, but if any of you wants to join and fight us in a <laughs> voting battle of democracy, you can do that. It will be very interesting and fun for all of us, I'm sure. Um, Cages will be provided if you want it to be a cage match. <laughs> right. Bludgeoning weapons only. Um, yeah, more on the... Um, Practical matters of the EV this year. We have six new, new members. Uh, we have one member less, than, not one new member less than last year, but a good bunch of uh, new members less than a couple of years ago. Um, well, if you know somebody who is being doing uh, good KD work and think it would be a good fit, uh, remember to invite them. It's always a good idea. But for now, let's um, thank. Uh, Oh, I wanted to say the name. Well, Raju, Neil, Gompa, Justin, uh, Felix, Natalie, and Simon, thanks for joining the KDV this year. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, about that one, something I wanted to mention. Uh, also, big thanks to Adrian, who has been working on new software for managing our members. This has been a big topic in the past, and we hope that with the new work now, it's going to be amazing. Thank you. Um, yep. Oh, it, the button got pressed. Spoilers! <laughs> no. <laughs> the button gets stuck. Don't push it. Well, it's the next button. It has like two buttons. This thing. Okay, yeah, that's good. <laughs> Um, so, um, yeah, uh, one of the big tasks we do, uh, besides of you EV members, is uh, having like individual supporting members who, uh, well, part of uh, what they do is, is donating. Uh, there's been like big changes on how um, donations happen. The individual supporting members are still on the previous uh, system and they're being migrated into new fun uh, ways of doing their stuff. But we also st started using uh, over the recent years, GitHub, and more recently, even DonorBox, and that's also ways that um, well, people are um, starting to well, do this individual supporting uh, process. Yeah, the, the, just the one. Yes. So those were the individual being like individual people who do it uh, for their own uh, sake. Uh, these are organizations that uh, participate, obviously, in a like kind of different uh, amount. We've had. Uh, good number of new ones for the last year, and thank you very much to the three of them being uh, Kubuntu Focus, T10, and Ambition, but not to the minutes of rest. Uh, the systems, Google, SUSE, the Kit Company, Canonical, Slimbook, and Tuxedo, uh, all of them are KD patrons being uh, organizations that um, 
are part of, of the KDV and they take part on other spaces like the advisory board for most of them who will get there. Also, we got a new uh, supporter, uh, which is Anioka. Anioka, actually, it's one of the minus two. Like, uh, they moved from patron to supporter. For fuck's sake. No. No? It, it went to this one and this the one. The advisory board. So the, the advisory board is a way for uh, organizations to have a say with KDE. Not a say in KDE, they're not steering, but it's good to have that conversation in, in somewhat private uh, to help those organizations understand where we are going and those organizations can say something about where they would like us to go, what their interests are. Uh, the advisory board consists of uh, both sponsors, patrons, um, such as Blue Systems and Canonical, organizations that make heavy use of KDE software, the city of Munich, um, and other interested uh, organizations. So these are people that we talk with with some regularity. There's uh, advisory board calls where we can hear each other out on what is interesting. So we'd like to thank Blue Systems, Canonical, the city of Munich, Debian, FOSS Nigeria, the Free Software Foundation, the Free Software Foundation Europe, Open UK, you saw pictures of Open UK uh, earlier today, uh, the OSI, SUSE, the Document Foundation, the Cute Company and Cute Group, Slimbook, Tuxedo, and our new advisory board members, Kubuntu Focus, G10 Code, and Ambition. So that's the advisory board. Besides the advisory board being oh. Besides the advisory board being the, the place where we can talk to our uh, supporting organizations, uh, we also have other friends, partners, and affiliations. Um, this is ongoing uh, collaboration, sometimes not because it's technical, sometimes because uh, we've shared an office or we just feel like uh, doing cool stuff together. So Lix and the Cute Project and Freien Randa meetings are our friends that do cool stuff. Um, KDE Spain is the local organization in Catalonia and Spain, and uh, they have a Academy ES, a similar kind of event as to what we're having here. Um, we're partners with GNOME, of course, to organize the Linux Application Summit. That's once a year uh, get together to talk about applications going out there. Uh, the Chaos, we are part of the Application Ecosystem Working Group. Neophytos is our, one of our friends there. Uh, affiliated with the Free Software Foundation Europe, the Open Source Initiative, and the Open Invention Network. Those are uh, free software promoting organizations and the Open UK um, that do things like patent protection, uh, licensing innovation. KDEV is, as an organization, also member of a number of things, the OSI, the OIN, OASIS, and the Document Foundation. That means that we have our little say in how f standards are built. Uh, we have a little say in uh, patent protection for the Linux ecosystem, and that's all very useful. So that's the way we're involved in the larger ecosystem around us. Oh, no. No. Let's switch to a smaller view. KDEV is uh, no longer a purely volunteer organization. We're really happy to have uh, a bunch of contractors and employees that help us achieve the goals of the EV. And the goals of the EV are to support you, all of you, in getting cool KDE stuff done. So uh, first and foremost, we should mention Petra, who uh, does all the things. Uh, we have. We will go through. All we'll of go them. through these in more detail uh, briefly. But I'd also like to mention. Go for it. Joseph, Annika, Paul, Adam, Dina, Tiago, Ingo, Natalie, and Nicholas. Ooh. And now we'll tell you all about them in the next slide. <laughs> all right. Um, so Petra, I'm sure many of you have uh, come across. She's. Um, incredible support for the board, maintaining our office, making sure that you get your reimbursements, that our paperwork is in order, all these things. Um, really important for DV to run.
Similarly, Dina, you might have come across her, amazing help in making sure this academy runs together with the local team and the rest of the academy team, um, as well as the Linux App Summit. Um, we couldn't do this without her support. Then we have Adam, uh, who is supporting everything around the goals, making sure that the goal champions have what they need, that they can meet every now and then and discuss. Um, and the same thing for the academy team, supporting meetings and so on. If you at some point need uh, project, co <coughs> sorry, project coordination support, let me know and we can figure it out. Um, which <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, which brings us to Lana and Joseph, uh, who have joined us for the KDE Eco program. Um, they have done amazing work in uh, making sure that KDE uh, is uh, taking part in the Plow Engel project, that all the paperwork gets done that all the community outreach gets done, that we uh, get the eco certificate and so on. Um, the funding for that has by now ended and we're looking for uh, new funding. Um, Lana unfortunately uh, uh, left us uh, due to the end of the project, but we hope uh, to work with her again in the future. And uh, Joseph has been focusing more on uh, community topics, which he will talk about in a uh, talk uh, later today or tomorrow, I'm not sure. Uh, you should join it. Oops, I think we skipped one. Yes, we did. A few. Uh, yes. All right, next up on our list of contractors, we have uh, Paul and Annika, our marketing team. Paul and Annika have been, they're sitting right over there, Paul and Annika have been responsible for helping to improve KDE's presence around the world, make sure everybody knows about us. Uh, this year has been quite a busy year. They have been doing a lot of work around the fundraisers and communications regarding that. The KDE network is a topic that has seen a lot of work as well to make sure that people are organized around the world. Uh, they have also helped a lot creating content for external events and helping to promote those. They've been updating KDE's presence in social media, making sure that people who are still using proprietary networks and have not yet making, made the jump over to free alternatives know about us and are able to hear about KDE News, and they have also helped to create the four uh, kids and four activists and four all sorts of other people pages that you can find on kde.org slash four. These are really cool pages. And uh, finally, they also help out with release notes and release announcements for our big releases, especially Plasma and KDE gear. So a lot of work. And, oops. Next up, uh, we have our newest contractor, Natalie, who is our hardware integrator. She has started just very recently. She's been working to improve the user experience in Plasma on devices like the types that are shipped by many of our partners. We have a lot of partners and supporters these days who actually sell hardware, which is a really exciting topic and something that's very near and dear to my heart. It's something that I like to see. And so Natalie is helping to make sure that this hardware works better with our software. She started with Power Devil and general power management topics, which are always very important, especially for devices with batteries. This also is a part of the KDE Eco Initiative, so there's some cross-pollination going on there. And we're going to be seeing a lot more from Natalie soon. Um. Ingo, we did uh, announce or last year uh, that he was the first of the Make a Living uh, positions we created, uh, including Natalie and then Nico that we we're going to talk about later. And, well, Tiago, I think, that we also put in that bucket, bucket at some point. Um, Ingo, he has been working on uh, bringing um, or making it easier for all of you to uh, like ship your applications in different platforms. Uh, there's been good progress on Windows Store and, and Android so far. Uh, we're uh, starting to see how to finalize that. Uh, there's, we're going to have a puff, right, Dingo, uh, over the week? Actually, yeah, right, Dingo, because it's on the slides. Um, <laughs> well, be there if you have an application that you, you want to see shipped, uh, and, and reach out to Ingo if there's something that you think that could be done at uh, like a KD level to, to have you do that. But uh, it's, it's very important for us that your applications get out there and hopefully like uh, well, 
help uh, fundraise somehow and be become part of this uh, well, healthy cycle of uh, or have your users are uh, uh, well, making KD bigger, right? And Nicolas, uh, he started, uh, yeah, say hi. <laughs> <laughs> Um, started um, this year uh, around February and we've been working so the idea for this position is to be working on um, the different aspects of uh, our software that are shared and that um, will help all of you to like work and create your KD software uh, at the moment it, this has mostly meant uh, to help with the port and everything to the sixes of Qt6 and Framework 6 and Plasma 6 and everything is a 6 now um, so that's what we've been doing so far, yeah, 666. Um, that's what we've been doing so far. Uh, we'll see what the future is going to uh, bring us soon. And the last of our make-a-living contractors is Tiago. Tiago picked up the uh, long-running uh, documentation improvement project. Uh, we spent some time a long time ago uh, examining what does our documentation need uh, to be really world class. Uh, Tiago has been picking up individual topics uh, each that last a month or two uh, to improve. So he's, he's improved the Kirigami documentation, um, has uh, been annoyed at kconfig, haven't we all? Um, so he's, he's available for writing and general documentation review. Uh, feel free to reach out to him if you have documentation needs. That's it for the contractors, and we will move on to events. Because KDEV supports, uh, well, contractors, pays for contractors to improve the KDE software, but also helps with events. Because events are great, because it means you can actually look people in the eye and uh, make funny gestures at them. And yell at them in person to fix your bugs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, see, uh, where, else would, you, way, yeah, where else would you get Kevin to way. stick out his tongue at you? <laughs> so we're really glad to have all of you here at Academy. Academy is our yearly, our biggest, our farthest flung event. Um, big thank you to the sponsors who made, make this happen. Um, one of the topics each year at Academy is where's the next one going to be? So uh, if you feel the urge to organize it in Arnhem, then... then do so. Um, anywhere else in the world. Uh, given the temperatures here right now, I think we want the next one to be in Norway in November. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But that's up to you. Feel free to organize a new one. We don't just do the big events, we also do, next slide please, sprints. Uh, sprints are far more focused, small or, uh, events that pick one special software topic. Um, or organizational topic, you see that we have uh, EV board sprints. That means that we get together uh, either in real life or online uh, and spend a weekend working on administration. Uh, there's been a KDE Plasma sprint. There's PIM, which traditionally tries out the cake in Toulouse. Um, there's the KDE Eco sprint. Um, we've, had a bun we've had a handful of sprints, but not nearly as much as we'd really like. And so I'd like to repeat the call to everyone in the KDE community. Uh, sprints are for you. And we're here to, make, to help you make those happen. So if you've got a topic, reach out to us, reach out to Adam, and we'll make it happen. Um, next to our own conferences and our sprints, we also uh, of course, show up in lots of other places. Um, so, for example, uh, so far uh, we were at FOSSUM this year. Um, Kitty Eco was uh, present at uh, LAS and, and the Bundestag. Uh, we went to something very new, uh, the All American High School Film Festival, to get a bit out of our bubble and talk to other people about cool stuff like Kate in Life. Um, Latinoware, the Ubuntu Summit, Qt World Summit, Qt Com Brazil, um, Megacon, another one of those things to get us out of the bubble. Um, if you want to represent KDE at events, uh, you should totally talk to the promo team and the board to get help for that if you need it. Um, 
on, a, on the side of conferences of our own. Uh, over the last year, we had the Academy last year, uh, the Linux App Summit uh, this year, uh, Academy ES, and of course, this Academy, Yay. where you all are. Um, and to make all this happen, we need money, <laughs> which fundraising gives us. Um, there are quite a few things happening about fundraising. Uh, as we already talked about, we got new patrons uh, with Kubuntu Focus, G10 Code, and Ambition. Um, together with the fundraising working group, uh, we uh, refocused our donations on a new platform, DonorBox. Um, we ran an end of the year campaign. Um, we ran a fundraiser for Caden Life, both of which were very successful. Um, we have started thinking about uh, how to raise uh, patronship prices starting uh, in uh, 2025 uh, because membership as a patron or patronship in KDE EV is comparatively cheap. Um, you can still get in before 2025 in the cheap prices. Um, tell your boss. Um, Grants have been successful in that we got the KDE Eco grant. Uh, so far, we've unfortunately not been successful in getting a follow-up grant. Um, if anyone uh, can uh, help with that, has ideas, please come talk to us and Joseph. Um, and uh, last but not least, um, we're thinking more about uh, how to uh, actually get paid apps into the proprietary app stores uh, as a source of uh, revenue for KDEV. And of course, uh, as the saying goes, do good things and talk about them. So we also have to tell the world about what we do as the EV. And we published a report um, for 2022 um, just uh, the other day. Uh, it's a long and beautiful document with a lot of uh, behind the scenes looks at what's happening in KDE EV and KDE. Um, if you haven't read it yet, highly recommend it and spread it to your friends. Um, so I already mentioned uh, the fundraiser for Caden Life um, and at Last Academy we talked about how we want to work with um, the Caden Life team as part of this whole make a living discussion that we try to um, find dedicated funds uh, for them to improve uh, Caden Life as a kind of test balloon to see if that is something uh, that works for KDEV and the team that uh, wants to do dedicated fundraising. The fundraising side of that has proven fairly successful um, and we're quite happy with that. Um, and we're quite happy with the effort that both the Kenyan Life team um, and the promo team, but also the fundraising team have put into this to make it a success because it was quite a, quite a bit of work. Um, now we have the money and now we need to spend it on uh, improvements to Kenyan Life, which is one of the next things uh, that will come up. And I'm sure you will hear more about it tomorrow in their keynote. Um, so overall, this try around dedicated individual project funding continues, but uh, things are looking pretty optimistic right now. So now is the time when we talk about some of our favorite things, the highlights of the year, everything that you all accomplished with our help and we accomplished with your help. Uh, there are some really great things. We talked a little bit earlier about sprints. We were very happy to see that sprints started happening again after the isolation of the COVID pandemic, which was no fun. We definitely want to see more sprints. This is something of our bread and butter. So let's see if we can do some more of those. Uh, we also concluded the Blower Engel project. The funding has run out, but it has essentially been successful. We got an app certified and we've created a lot of interest and momentum behind it. I think you saw a lot of engagement about KDE EV and the goal topic before. It now continues as a community goal, so that's really great. We also have our fundraising platform. Lydia just spoke on that a little bit, but moving to DonorBox has been really hugely impactful for us and getting a modernized fundraising platform gives us many good options going forward for the future. We also have Qt6 porting, which is going on. This is something that's been happening in the background for a while, and now, starting a few months ago, it's happening in the foreground. So we're really very happy 
for all the work that people have done on here. Uh, I want to call out Nico in particular, who has put really a lot of effort into this, and the net result is that many people in the audience here, myself included, are able to actually live on Plasma 6 Git Master right now. Okay, okay, I'll <laughs> shut up now. <laughs> it's pretty great. Um, and we're also, in general, seeing more interest in our hardware among our hardware and software partners, and Lydia is reminding me that I missed something that was behind the microphone. Uh, we filled all of the make a living positions. This was a multi-year effort to start hiring more people and we have now done it. So we did a lot of the things we said we were going to do and it's pretty great. Next slide. So what we said we would do, number one was reassess our financial situation. We definitely wanted to move towards more sustainable funding models, and we also wanted to make sure that we were spending enough of our money to keep out of legal hot water. We have now succeeded in doing that. Uh, we have also modernized our donations platform. So on the fundraising side in general, what we set out to do has been a success. We trialed project fundraising, as Lydia mentioned a little bit ago. This has also been a success. We're going to be using this experience going forward to do some more things that's very exciting. Uh, we also wanted to make sure that our infrastructure was modernized. The move to GitLab was, has been proceeding. Everybody is using it now. And in the near future, we're going to finally 100% move into that, cutting off Fabricator. So that is going to happen as well. The next thing is to support the new KDE goals. This is something that's been happening over the year. Uh, speaking personally as a gold champion, I feel very well supported. I can't speak for everybody else, but that's at least one out of three. Uh, we're going to try to have a cross goal sprint sometime next year, possibly the spring, some summer. Keep an eye out if that's something you'd be interested in attending. There's gonna be more information about that soon. Uh, in general, we would like to see a little bit more community involvement involved in the goals. These are definitely community goals. Uh, as, as nice as it is to have gold champions with lots and lots of time to work on it, uh, sometimes that isn't always possible, and so it's great when people take the initiative too. So that's something that we would like to see in the coming year. Uh, we also want to learn a little bit more about our changing ecosystem with regards to how software is distributed and what our position is in the greater free software world. Uh, this is something you're probably going to hear about in many other forms over the coming conference, and we're going to continue to keep an eye on that. Uh, and finally, a big topic this year was to get us all back together in person. Now we can pretty much all say that the global pandemic is finally over, and it is very nice that we're all able to sit here in a conference and enjoy each other's presence. So that's pretty great, and I'm happy that we've been successful in that. So um, as topics for next year, um, you will see that there is uh, stuff that continues over the years uh, or since last year. It's not because um, well, we think that it wasn't successful, but uh, well, a lot of topics like span over a good uh, amount of time. Uh, like uh, Nate was saying, Kitty Goals, they're working uh, very well, but uh, we do miss uh, people joining them. It would be interesting to understand what would be the correct dynamic for that to happen. Because, uh, like, uh, well, like Nate, I uh, was a kitty goal leader for a while, and it could feel uh, lonely at times. Um, it's a very like social issue, but I, I think that from the KDV we can uh, have that happen. Like, for example, through that sprint, like finding the right way to help the goals is uh, gonna be um, well a good source for uh, success for the goals, which are in the end a success for for KDE itself. Um, the financial situation that we keep talking about, well, uh, like you know, we had uh, big injections in the past that uh, we had to learn to manage. Well, we've done the Make a Living program that has uh, increased our spending considerably. We need to marry these two together uh, through donations, through everything. Um, and that's what we're doing. And, well, there's no pandemic anyways, but we do believe that, uh, like, Meeting is part of uh, the, the goals for the KDV, turning the, the KDE from something that is uh, virtual and theoretical into something practical and where people get to work together is a big part of what the KDV does. And well, we need to make sure that it's part of our, our goals. Uh, as Adrian uh, mentioned before, it's about the conferences, but it's also about the 
uh, the the sprints, the different meetings that that we we can have, and well, whichever is the right ways that we have uh, to coordinate among ourselves in any case, right? Um, on the last few years, we were talking about the make a living positions, about uh, well, how do we do this? Um, we're moving into a mindset of okay, we are now spending that money. We need to make sure that we're delivering there. Not to put out the pressure into all of you uh, working on that on there, but actually it's it's on all of us, right? Like we need to make sure that these positions um, deliver as well as like not us being contracted, but uh, us as like whoever benefits from from these positions. So because all of them, I think that we all agree, uh, bring um, important things to the to the community. But well, nobody can change the world on, on our own. We need to work together. Uh, so for us, uh, making sure that the make a living uh, positions uh, are successful is, is very important because it's what is going to bring, um, we believe, the, well, the story of the next few years of the KDV in general. Um, one trend that we've also been seeing, and it's not entirely unrelated to what I was just talking about, is getting our products closer to our users. We've, uh, as KDE, been uh, very distant to our end users, uh, a little bit in this theoretical, virtual uh, kind of product that uh, maybe we've been. And while that works and it's super fun, um, well, it makes us a little bit less relevant, finding ways to, like, touch on what everybody cares about and being able to act on it is some, something important. Now, you could think this is something more related to what the KD community does and the different developers, but, um, well, our experience or my, my experience is that um, as a KDV, we have a lot of, well, possibilities that, to help there. And um, if, if there's ways we can do that, uh, we will continue doing so, like we are already doing now. I think that you all agree. Yeah. So these have been uh, the key topics that, topics that we see for um, the KDV for this year. Uh, obviously, everything is discussable, uh, be it at the AGM, be it on the hallways, on the chat rooms online, or uh, we're going to have an office hour on during the buff days um, where we can talk about whatever you want to talk about. We don't really have a list of topics or anything to touch on there. Uh, so feel free to join. Um, like I said earlier, also, if you're thinking about either joining the KDV or even joining the KDV board, you can uh, reach out to us and we can talk about it. Um, it like you're welcome to do <laughs> either of those things. It's all uh, fine, fine and fun, I, think I would say. It's a good thing to do. So um, that's what we wanted to talk about. I think that we have some time for questions, if any of you have them. Thank you. I just have two questions. So I was thinking, um, do you think that uh, positions for make, make a living at KDE could also provide some kind of reporting on their activities for the last year. A, a lot of us actually don't get to see much of that work and um, I mean I'm kind of disconnected as so I would love to know. Um, and then the other one is that um, I don't know if you would consider uh, finding help there too, but when it comes to design integration, uh, I feel like sometimes like some of us designers just have a, a big bridge to cross when it comes to you know realizing some of the some of the work we want to do, and unless we go and rally some developers that might like what we're doing, we have most of the times no chance of making a certain change happen in the system. And so I just wanted to suggest that and ask that question to find some kind of you know, UI integrator or something like that. <laughs> Maybe it's easier if you do the questions one by one. Um, uh, on the reporting, something we've told our, our um, contractors always, uh, maybe it's more relevant for the make a living, but in general it's for all of them, is that well, communicating is, is important and even part of the job. 
uh, for to make a living, like you will see them like blogging or uh, well, sending emails on the different mailing lists. I mean, that is how uh, the kind of tools that we have available. We can always do more of that. Well, note that we also need to pay for it. So uh, that's how contracting works. Uh, but I think that we're not do doing terribly bad that way. Um, we will be seeing more of that. There's uh, two of them that are like not even one year in, or well, actually none of the make a living are one year in to the position. So uh, we also need some kind of flexibility there. More communication is would always be better, but um, I don't know. Yeah, it's an evolving topic. This is something that we're pretty new to at KDEV. So anything that you have to share regarding what's working and what's not working, I think is very helpful. Uh, the message that more communication would be desirable is a good message. I think we don't want to make HR policy here at this meeting, um, but it's definitely a helpful thing for, for you to tell us. And I think that we can be thinking about that going forward. So thank you. Looks like we're getting an answer out of the audience too. Ooh. You turned it off. No, I think I turned it. No, no. So to uh, sort of answer the Andy's first question on my be behalf, um, what I've been doing or trying to do is do like a monthly blog post of these are the things I've done this month as part of uh, being KDE software platform guy. I have been slacking off a bit for the last two months, which is not great, and I should get back to that habit, but that's at least my ideal of, of working and communicating. And I also would like to sort of take the reverse and turn it into a question. How could we or how should we establish some sort of communication channel from the community to us contractors, what the community would like us to see doing? So uh, I think that, and that's what we've been suggesting to all of the contractors in the past is um, you get sponsored, but you get sponsored to work within the community. So the, in the community, we have plenty of channels for us to communicate and just using these in the most efficient manner should be enough. Like if that's not enough, we have like bigger problems, right? Um, you're here, uh, everybody go talk to Nico and tell him what you want from him. That's what he's saying right now. Um, in general, like extrapolating a lot about, for example, how, we, how each of the contractors communicates is delicate, right? Because the different positions will also be very specific about what they do. Like for example, on uh, Nico's case, like there's like smaller tasks that you can be talking about, but like no, uh, like super flashy things on the case of Ingo, he has been seeing like bigger things and he has been blogging about the features when they get more done. And I don't think that one or the other is a better approach. I think that it's like on a case by case basis uh, doing it will make more sense. When we start seeing like how Natalie does that, like I'm sure that they'll find the correct way and like deciding that they all should be doing this thing is also like the, the wrong approach. Um, on the second question from Andy was you about... Want me to take that one? Go for it. Okay. So I think if I can paraphrase your second question, it was basically, can KDE EV hire a designer or something like that? Um, is that, is that well, good? I, I, I would say it's a designer, like, oh. like purely from an artistic perspective, right? But I mean somebody who can like write code um, and so, so integrate. Yeah, somebody who like can, an like they can order around. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an interesting idea. One thing I'll say from an HR perspective is that we don't currently have any positions open right now. Uh, this is by design. We wanted to fill all these positions and then reassess our financial situation. What we really, really don't want to do is hire a bunch of people. They do a bunch of great work. We run out of money and then we need to fire a bunch of people. So that would be terribly undesirable. Right now, we're in a situation where we're deliberately spending more money than we take in so that we can reduce our reserves. But 
those reserves don't last forever, and we're not trying to spend our reserves down to zero. So before we can open any new positions, we need to increase fundraising efforts so that our burn rate doesn't go down as much as it is right now. Again, I would like to emphasize this is intentional and deliberate. We're not, the organization is not going bankrupt. We were deliberately trying to spend down our reserves by hiring for these positions. Now having done so, we need to make sure that there's a sustainable funding source so that we can keep the people who we have hired continuing to be hired so we don't have to get rid of them and also expand anything in the future. I would say if you have any interest in future positions, please help out on the fundraising side. This is super important. We now have really great tools that make fundraising easy. So at the moment, I think the design topic and the interface between design and code is probably going to have to remain a community topic, a, a VDG topic um, at the moment. Yeah, now that you mentioned this, um one of the topics when we were talking about KDN Live was how are we going to manage the different, like the separate fundraisings. This, this was um, something that we never really wanted to do uh, because, well, it's work. And over the last year, um, what's happening? Well, over the last year, I, I worked on uh, some tooling for uh, our, well, for his treasury work. So at the moment, we have the opportunity to do better work there. So. Maybe if you're creative, we can find things we can do together. We're getting one last comment slash question. It is a comment. Sorry. Uh, continue from what uh, Nicolas said, uh, the, the promo uh, team. We uh, write a, a, a log uh, every two weeks that is uh, nominally for Nate, but we can make it public so that everybody can see what we have done during those two weeks. A lot of the stuff is anyway publicly visible because it goes out on social media and stuff like that. But if uh, people want to see that, we can make it public too so that others can see exactly what we have done every two weeks. Thank you. And that wraps up. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs>